Next up, um, a gentleman who's come from Uganda, uh, Mr. Silva Mugisha. He's the CEO of the National Water and Sewerage Corporation, and he's also on the board of the International Water Association and the African Water Association. Um, Silva's going to be talking about, is water a social good? How have Uganda changed the perception of water? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very difficult to talk when my colleagues, especially Tebi, has just talked and excited the audience. I like talking from a factual point of view, but this has now put me into a very precarious situation. <laughs> Let me begin with the answers to the question, and then I show the working to you. Is water a social good? The answer is no. It's not. It's both social and the market good. How have Uganda changed the perception of water? Through communication. These are the answers. And I'm really going to elaborate to you how it works. Now, is it a social good? If it is on this side, Yes, if you get water from the stream, it is a free good. You can give it free. But if it is on the other side where water is extracted, it is treated, and it has to be pumped to the people, it cannot be a free good. Somebody has to pay for it. Now, if somebody has to pay for it, we know that under the Sustainable Development Goals, water is a basic human right. What should happen then? So what should happen is that it has to be paid for, but at an affordable rate. It has to be affordable. If you look at the other side, those are the poor people who are fetching the water. And in most countries, I'm sure, even in your countries, the poor pay 20 to 100 times more than even the rich. And we pretend to be giving a service. How have we done it in Uganda? I just want to give you a few characteristics of how a utility that serves a good that is both a social good and a market good works. And I will not go so much into the details, but our utility, National Water and Sewage Corporation, is a public company. Tebi was talking so much about public versus private. But I think it doesn't matter. As long as if you understand what the service is, if you put the customer first, if you have a vision, if you have a plan of serving the people. Now, one of the characteristics of our utility, for example, which looks at both social and, and market of the water is we have a clear strategic direction, which is formulated by everybody, the people inside, the people outside. And then this utility prioritizes development rather than ex a consumption. You get a very little money, make sure you develop services to reach as many people as possible. The other aspect is service. Most of the utilities, especially where the private sector is involved, they want to maximize profit. And I think if you're going to serve all the people, the main emphasis should be service delivery. Of course, without profit, you also cannot invest. But I think service delivery should be the main driving force. And then putting the people at the center. You can see there, the children are drinking water. We are making sure that the customer is very, very important. The other aspect is efficiency. If you are going to look at water as both a social good and market efficiency, bringing the cost down, is key. The other aspect which I think has been talked about 
is the staff. I was happy to hear that people is now infrastructure. Normally when we talk of infrastructure, we are talking about pipes, we are talking about pumps, but I think people is also infrastructure that deserve to be invested in. After doing all this, one of the characteristics of a utility that does this is to look at the numbers. These are the numbers, for example, for National Order, 1998, 2011, 2016, and now. You cannot talk of serving water if you are not focusing on the bottom line. National Water Uganda is one of the few utilities on the continent that makes a surplus, gets the revenues, and even has a surplus for development. And you can see the numbers as they appear down there. But how have we done it? And I was also, again, very happy when the issue of clarity came. In order for you to make everybody know that water is not just a social good, is not just a good to be given free, they must see you with a clear strategic direction which is clear to them and which is focusing at water for all. Once everybody knows that you are there, not to just serve a few, but you are there to serve all, most probably they will support you. In Uganda, I'm the only multi-party person. When I'm in the parliament, I talk to the opposition, I talk to the people in the government. Because whether you are in opposition, whether you are in the government, you need water. So the only thing that joins all of us is water. And so when I'm there, I'm a daring of everybody. The opposition people talk nice about me. The government people talk about, nice about me because I am giving them water. And it's because we present to them a clear strategic direction. What else do we do? You cannot communicate if the people internally don't understand. We've made sure that our people understand that water requires inputs in order to be given out. And that's the message our people give. Our people go to the churches, they go to the mosques, they go everywhere to tell them that this water you are getting in your house cannot be a free thing because we put in chemicals, we put in power, we lay pipes in order to bring it. And once you have your people who have understood, then you go out now to the communities. You can see there, I told you in the mosques, we are on Twitter. Twitter is a very, very strong tool. It opens up even to the young people. They can criticize you, they can thank you, but when they talk, at least you get a good idea how the public is thinking about you. So we vigorously explain to the people, we compare the price of water with beer. <laughs> you don't know how many 20 liter jelly cans of water are in, in one bottle of beer. 100 in Uganda, the price of water is such that one half liter of beer is, 20, is 120 liter jerry cans of water. So if the people are drinking beer, why can't they buy water? <laughs> if the people are using airtime, one message of airtime, just high, is about four jerry cans of water, 20 liter jerry cans of water. So we communicate this. And people have been able to know that, oh, water is not just for free. After all, using comparative economics, it is much, much cheaper than all these other things. So that is how we communicate. And we've been able to, oh, we've been able to deliver on our promise, because that's also very, very important. What do you say you will deliver you must make sure you deliver it. And I think Mr. Tebi said it very, very well. If you say you are going to give people water, please give it to them. I told people we are going to lower the price of the people in the, in the low-income low, low, low communities. We are going to do it. 
Once you do it, I can assure you there is no person worth being called a human being that will continue to say water should be free. Once you do all this communication. Finally, I really want to thank you very much. I complained about this technology before. So this is what we have been able to do. We've changed the perception, and we think we should be able to continue delivering this good as both a social good and also a market good. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>